Well, hey everybody, I'm Dr. Mercatella, broadcasting to you from the conference room, uh, which is right next to my office and across from my lab. And today I want to talk to you about, uh, today's lesson is about the one independent variable two group design, which is the simplest type of design that you can, uh, that you can use. And so we have one independent variable and two groups. So you might have a um, experimental group and a control group, or you might have two experimental groups where um, they get different um, levels of whatever the independent variable it is that you're running. So maybe you're testing some kind of medication or something like that. A key part of the one independent variable two group design is random assignment. And there's that word random again. The reason why random assignment is important is because we want to be sure that people have an equal chance of being put into the uh, experimental condition or the control condition into either of these um, groups. Anytime you depart from um, random assignment, then you get into problems with the internal validity of the study. Studies are inherently or experiments, I should say, are inherently in, internally valid. Uh, but if you depart from random assignment, uh, that's questionable. Now, the statistic that we use in a one independent variable two group design is what's called an independent groups t test. Independent, dependent groups t test because you do a t-test if you have a two-group, one independent variable design. So the reason why I point this out too is there's the term independent groups right there because uh, you're choosing the, pe the, the membership in one group is independent of membership in the other. So if you think about it, like when you pick teams in elementary school, uh, people don't choose randomly who's gonna be on their team. Um, they kind of pick their friends or they pick people who they think are going to do quite well in whatever the sport is. And so that's, uh, so we try to keep this idea of independent uh, groups because we want our experiments to be valid. Let me give you an example of this. Uh, this is one of my favorite studies in psychology. It's the Brady uh, 1958 uh, executive monkey study. I've said before in class that all great psychological experiments uh, involve one of two things, uh, either chimpanzees or electric shocks, uh, preferably chimpanzees giving electric shocks to people. Uh, that study has not been done yet, so I leave that to you. What Brady did was, uh, he's running the study in the 1950s, and he wants to know what's more important, to be in control of uh, what happens to you or have somebody else in charge of what happens to you. So he, was, he essentially put um, um, monkeys, these were rhesus monkeys, and there's no wrong way to eat a rhesus. Uh, he was putting them in chairs and, and uh, there was a button there and uh, every 20 seconds for six hours, a light would come on and the monkey had to press the button and then that made it so that there was no shock. If they didn't, if the light came on and they didn't press the button, then the monkeys would both get a shock. But let me, let me go into this uh, a little bit more in depth here for a second. So uh, he did a pretest because he wanted to see which uh, of the rhesus monkeys liked to button press, because there's gonna be a lot of button pressing in this study. And so the pretest determined who was the executive and who was the worker. So you're the executive if you really like button pressing, which I think is still true today. And you're a worker if you're kind of like, meh, it's okay to press buttons. It's, it's not that exciting, really. So what he does, actually he had to stop this study uh, initially because um, all of his executives kept on dying because that's what he was interested in is what is it more stressful to be uh, the person oh and so just to go back they're both they're they're put next to each other in chairs 
Uh, so I'm just going to draw them. So this is the executive. This is the worker. And the light comes on, and here's the button. And if the executive hits the button, then neither of them get a shock. If the light comes on and he doesn't hit the button, then, here we'll put a, a sad face on him, then they both get the shock, okay? So they either both avoid the shock or they both receive the shock. So uh, what Brady found is that the executive uh, was much more like, was much more stressed. Like I said, they had peptic ulcers. He had to stop the study um, initially, and then he put them on to six hour on, six hour off. Uh, or initially, he just had them going for as long as they could. And this fit, fit the zeitgeist of the time, which was that it's more stressful, they believed, uh, to be in charge, to be, it, you can think of it as like if you're running a, um, automobile company, okay, if you're Ford, uh, who's under more pressure? The executive who says, let's build the Edsel, or the worker who's just putting parts on it, okay? And so this felt what they thought uh, was true at the time, which was that the executives are under far more pressure, and so therefore they were more likely to, uh, yeah, they are likely to die. There's a major problem with this study, though, that I just talked about, which is this pretest. So it's okay to give them a pretest, but then what Brady did was he assigned them to conditions based upon the pretest. And so he didn't randomly assign them to conditions. This was pointed out by Weiss. Weiss, in 1971, reruns the exact same study. He does a pretest on how much they like button pressing, okay? So let's say if you like button pressing, we're going to call you a type A, because we, we have type A and type B people. If you're meh about it, then you're a type B. And we talk about these distinctions in psychology. Type A people are like hard charging, driven, um, uh, yeah, that sort of thing. And type B people are kind of, you know, they're chill. It doesn't mean they don't accomplish stuff, but they're not um, as, as, as driven. Uh, you know, I'm on a stair stepper all the time, so I'm definitely a type A person. Um, yeah, so he gives them this pretest, and then he randomly assigns them. To either the executive or the worker condition. And so you're a type A, so you like button pressing, or you're a type B, where you're like, I'll, put, I'll make it uh, congruent, where you're like, meh. And then it's the exact same study otherwise, where you have two chimps. And this is the executive, and you know, like a full body. And here's the worker. Wait a minute, I'm gonna make him sad. Or angry, I don't know which one he is. Uh, he's the worker though. And then here's the button, and here's the light that comes on. And so uh, it's still the same situation. If the executive doesn't hit the button, uh, when the light comes on, then they both get a shot. Um, yeah, so what do you think? Who is it going to be most stressful for? What Vice finds is that when you uh, randomly assign them to conditions, that type A monkeys, the one, or chim uh, they're not chimpanzees, they're rhesus monkeys, they're always more stressed because they're just under more stress anyway. But the most stressed they are is when they love button pressing and they have to watch, or they have to be the worker, they have to watch the other, the, the type B monkey um, pressing the buttons. That's very upsetting for them. So these are, this is the, the group that was most likely to get all, ulcers. Um, yeah, and, and th they were also likely here too. Now, here's the, the final takeaway with the executive monkey study is how is this study run? Is this a within subjects design 
or between subjects design. And so I'll give you a moment to think about it. And then I'll tell you, this is, it has to be, a between subjects, between groups design. Because uh, you can't be a, uh, like an executive monkey who dies, or a type A monkey, and then he's an executive and he dies, and then he's resurrected, and then he's made the worker, and then we see if he dies faster. We lack that technology currently. Uh, it, was, it existed about 2,000 years ago, but uh, it has been subsequently lost. So we have to run this as a between subjects, between groups design. Okay, so that's uh, the simplest type of design that you can use, which is the one independent variable two group design. Um, I hope you're doing well, and I wish you the best, and have a great day.